Thank you very much for being here. I think you are quite brave. It's already 5.30, <coughs> still here, so I will try to, to do your time a bit uh, valuable. Uh, okay, I just will go directly to the point and say, I'm going to talk regarding Ingeber. Ingeber, it's what we call NGT in Break Energy Recovery System. We will start with an introduction, then we will talk one implementation phases of this system, and then we'll go to the application uh, we have made for Metro Bilbao, and then to the end question, what to do with the energy? So, generally speaking, uh, as most of you already know, uh, when one train is breaking, let's say, uh, current, uh, current technology of the trains allow that this energy is sent back to the catenary. But uh, for DC catenary metros, this has just one limitation, which is that this energy has to be taken by someone at the same very moment. Otherwise, let's say, this energy or either uh, has to be buried somewhere, and normally it's buried in the breaking resistor of the trains. So what, uh, when we look into to this problem, problem let's say, we, we try to check, okay, wh where's the limitation? Let's say, what, why is this? And uh, we, we check that here, we, we can see here in this point, let's say, the current substations, they, they have a transformer, they have a direct rectifier. And we think that they have a very, very good characteristics, and they, have, they are extremely, extremely, extremely reliable. And most of the operators of trains, if, if someone starts to tell us, okay, I'm going to change this extremely reliable thing by some new thing, say, okay, sorry, but okay, this is a, <laughs> it's a extremely reliable, but please don't change it. And say, and I do, we, we do believe actually that this should be like that. But, but then we, we started to work on the idea and say, okay, we, why, not, why not put something in parallel? And say, well, we, we developed a system where without modification of, of the current substation, we connected in parallel and we were checking the line and when where there's one train that was breaking and, and most important thing, there was not another train that was taking this energy, let's say, we transformed it in AC and we could be able, uh, we could deliver it back to the grid or to be used by internally by the, by the uh, metro operating system or even why not sold back to the electricity operator. So then when we started to analyze this point, let's say, we, we analyzed that, okay, first of all, uh, we have to check that, uh, and I have to clarify that, first of all, the operator, what has to do is that they have to try to synchronize their trains as much as possible, because there's nothing as efficient as one train sending the energy to another train. But no matter how good you do, and uh, you, you contract the signaling companies and so on, they are always, this, this is per, a certain spare of energy that, that makes that these systems be, be profitable. So we, we develop a system that suggests so as very few points, let's say, does not modify the current substation installation, so the high cost elements are uh, like transformer rectifier and maintain, let's say, the operation is transparent to the existing system, let's say, we, in case we have any problem with our equipment, we disconnect and the, the system work as it was before, the system's powers, and this is very important, is planned in function of the savings, because then finally it's good, it's good to be green, but finally there's always the guy or the lady of money and say, okay, you know what, if it's not profitable or there's no return on investment in a certain period, let's say, I'm not inter interested in, and finally the, the return energy is it's, it's of high quality. So, how to implement this kind of systems, because as, as we told, let's say, in Spanish, we say that every, every uh, line it's, it has one father and one mother, let's say. It's they are all, all your systems are different, let's say. They have different catenary topologies, different voltages, different line profiles, or steps, or with gradients, without gradients, uh, with different rolling stock topologies, with different uh, braking modes. So, uh, first of all, an initial analysis has to be made. And for that, we, we do is that, I will not uh, stop in the very details, but we do is that at first, we start taking data from, uh, from, your, from, from the system. We take data from onboard uh, equipment. We take data as well with some bathymeters that we also install on board. And we also get some data from the substation. And what we do is the information. We make a mathematical analysis, which is important. And with this a mathematical analysis, what we get is that one very important input is that what is the energy balance in your operation today? Where is every kilowatt 
hours spent in your operation because most of you know how much energy you are paying in kilowatts hour, euros, dollars, whatever, but probably you don't know exactly where this energy is going to. And this is very important in order to, to make a proper analysis. After that, what we do is that we have uh, we develop a simulation tool where we first we make different different modelizations. First, we introduce the current data of uh, of the of the customer, make it that all the substations are just traction substations, and we okay, we get some results from the simulation. We compare with the data. Okay, looks okay, it's okay, and then after we suppose that all the substations can recover all the energy, and this gives okay the maximum theoretical value that we could save is certain percent, but of course, to save all the energy is not economically efficient because uh, let's say we, there's a point where the, uh, let's say the investment and the savings are, let's say, uh, are, are compensated. So then we start to do this, this simulations and finally we found a solution proposal and we suggest this to the, to the operator. So, why? Let's say because uh, let's say with the result, what we are giving to the operator is that okay, you have your system. Your system looks like this today. If you install this amount of equipment with this value, let's say you will have uh, this saving per year, and you will have a return of investment in a certain period. Because it's finally, let's say, as I told, let's say green is okay, but but uh, if there's no money, there's no green. And we think that okay, that we should uh, invest in green, but you should take care that investment is valuable. Just an example, I will show you how our simulation tool looks like. like we have not been very imaginative, but okay, we have represented here, let's say, just, just to show you a tool, the squares are the substations, red ones are classical substations, the green one here is what, what we when you keep with reversible stations, and, and the other, these are the trains, and, and we simulate how the trains are moving, how the currents are moving between the trains, the green ones are the trains are breaking, the red ones, red ones are the ones that are tractioning. If you, if you take, for example, in this, that particular service station, you see that depending if the trains are close or, or not, let's say, it's sometimes it's recovery, sometimes it's in traction. So we simulate this for different periods, for different uh, uh, operation times, for different days of the week, for different rolling stock, and finally with this, okay, we get some certain results that, uh, okay, that we feel comfortable just to give an idea. So you will say, okay, but it looks good. Let's say a PowerPoint presentation, so it looks nice, but is it real? So, so, so that's why I, I wanted to come here to present you what our experience in Bilbao has been. So Bilbao, sorry, it's, it's a Bilbao Metro, it's a metro which was constructed in 1995. We are talking about it has two lines in which y shape with around 30 stations, around 40 kilometers, and with 10, 10 traction substations. And okay, the result finally is that we installed one prototype and after the successful uh, three and a half years ago and after the successful test of the, of the, of the substation, we have installed four more, that it's completing what, what we thought that it's, it's economical viable. But le let's start the story from the beginning. Let's say Metro Bilbao, after that, they implemented the system they started to work out, okay, let's, let's, uh, let's improve the, the energy efficiency. But they have two goals. One is that was the reduction of the, of the, of the, of the consumption and, uh, and to have a, a more economic uh, operation because this was the second cost after the personal cost. But there was another, another issue and, and it's a very funny uh, way to, to that counts that uh, I was talking to the let's say, technical director of Metro Bilbao and he was, when the Metro was constructed, he was telling that when, while he was walking through the tunnels, while Metro was constructed, let's say, the rats, because okay, tunnels always there are rats, let's say, the thickness of the air that they have, the full, it was quite a, quite a lot. But nowadays, that when he was going to the tunnel, he was saying that the rats were bold and were using swimming wear because the tunnels were hot. Let's say, breaking resistors of the train were making the tunnel being hot. And okay, we don't care about the rats too much, at least, at least in Bilbao. But the question is that there are a lot of equipments in the tunnel that are sensitive to the, to the heat. And this means that 
or either we have less reliability or either we have to cool down the tunnel and we have also to cool more down the, the train, which means even more energy. So something had to be done. So they started first initially trying to make a good synchronization between the trains. They made as much as they could and I think that they could, they made quite a lot. And then they started to say, what else we can do? So we started to work with them. Let's say we make the analysis and for the result of the analysis, I will just go to this figure because I think that's Quite, there are a lot of numbers, but I will try to explain is that this is what we call the energy balance, and this is the energy balance that we made for Metro Bilbao. In Metro Bilbao, let's say, if, so this doesn't work, so I will go. If we go, if we take the, 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 the energy balance from the train perspective, let's say, let's, let's, take, uh, let's look at the red figures, let's say, if 100% of the train that 34.2% of the energy is really used to move the train, to, to, let's say, to accelerate the train and to maintain <coughs> the resistance to the advance of the train. Around, in Bilbao, around 14% of the energy was used for the auxiliary systems. And there was up to 51.8% of this energy that could be interchanged. And with, with very good implementation of synchronization, they could, uh, at peak hours, achieve a 43% of, uh, of uh, recovery between the trains. But 8.8% of the energy of, from the train point of view was finally burnt in the breaking resistors. But if we now take a look, and don't look at the issue from but the train, but from the traction service stations, that since the trains are taking energy from other trains, but also from service station, finally, this 8% uh, from the train perspective becomes a 14% from the traction substation bill, from the bill you pay for, for, the, for the traction. And so what we analyze, and we make analysis where we could put the, the substation, the reversible substations, and we concluded that it was worth to go target the saving of 8.5% and let their additional 5.88% just to be burnt in the resistors because they were very peak, uh, peak powers that were not worth to, to, to save. So with this all information, we implemented, and uh, well then they told us, okay, implement a prototype. And we implemented a prototype in Ripa substation. Ripa substation is, if you can see here, is that where the two lines are, are mixing and where there's higher traffic. So, why we selected that? Because, okay, since there was were more interchange between the trains, was, let's say, and we don't want to go against that, let's say, we tested, okay, if it works here, it should work everywhere. So we, we went to the worst point to make the demonstration. And now, this, this let's say, the, up to now I have shown studies, I have shown simulations. These are data, real data, measured data, with the, with the let's say, we make an analysis, for 85 working days, where we were saving around 2,640 kilowatts hour per day. Friday nights, that's a special service where the trains are running from 10 o'clock in the evening until 2.30 in the morning, just for people to who are allowed to go for dinner on, on Friday and so on. So there are less trains with less, uh, less, uh, less um, frequency, but the, since there are less, less frequency, less interchange between the trains, let's say finally the, the, the energy that is recovered is higher. If we go to Saturday, let's say we have 3,130, but the very interesting thing is that Saturday night service. In Bilbao, metros operate 24 hours a day on Saturdays. So people doesn't need to take the car to go to, to the bar, to the central. They can go back by, by train, by public transport home. I think that it has improved a lot. Let's say I have decreased in number of accidents. Let's say it has been a very, very good measure. But the question is that the, the frequency is low. It's a, we have one train every 15 minutes. But the saving, it's more or less equivalent to, to one working day with, with much less trains. And if we go to Sundays where the frequency is low, if Athletic of Bilbao is not playing, because if Athletic is playing, we have a lot of trains to go to the stadium and then, but we are saving around 4,000 kilowatts per hour. So the question is that on that particular substation, we saved 13.3% of the consumption of that particular substation. So with that, let's say Metro Bilbao was aware that, okay, the system was working, and after that say, okay, instead of achieving the 13.3% of one, of one substation, Putting five substations will achieve the eight percent 
but of the complete traction uh, energy. And uh, we ended actually the implementation of the other four equipments on between January and February, and now we are just in the moment of, uh, let's say, uh, starting the measurements with, with, the, with the, all the four substations. But so far the results are very, very promising. So just as a conclusion of Metro Bilbao experience, let's say we get real saving around 1 million kilowatts per hour, kilowatts hour per, per year with a substation of 1.5 megawatts with a payback period of six to seven years, because again, green is okay, but money is important as well. We, energy that feedback is regulated by law in Spain. The state installation is small and independent, that's a, and it's transparent with operation, and the, and the quality of the energy, let's say, we say that we have measured the energy that is received by up, and the energy that is returned, and even the electricity supplier confirms that the quality of wave quality that the, our equipment is given is better than the one that which is received by the, by the network. Just a couple of pictures of how the state, you, you can see here it's, it's fitted, uh, the first substation is 7.5 square meters between two of the transformers of the substation. And just introduction between a new project we're implementing, we are implementing nowadays, we have uh, last week we put it uh, the, uh, in, a, let's say, with the, the truck, put it in the place, and now we are, everything is being commissioned. Let's say, a DIF in Spain, let's say, uh, in this case, a 3,000 volt DC operator asked us to, to make the same, and they, they have installed, a pro they, they make a tender for a, for a first uh, commercial uh, recovery system for a 3,000 volt DC catenary in Spain. We were uh, granted with, with, that, uh, with that tender. And we have started to commission it uh, actually last week. So I hope that now I'm coming that the objective of that substation is, is to, to save around 1,400, no, 1 1.4 megawatt hours per, per, let's say, per, per year. Let's say 40% more than the one that we are saving in Metro Bilbao. We are talking about 3,000 volt. Let's say it has much more distance uh, and uh, it's much more efficient in that, in that sense. And okay, we are at, the, at, the, at this very moment making the installation of this equipment. And just uh, what to do with the energy which is recovered, which is a very important question. Is that first of all, what we think is that internally, let's say we try to use it internally in the consumption of the rest of the network. Let's say because it goes to the bar, which is which it's feeding the stations, the illumination of of the equipments and everything else on the on the metro line. But after that, let's say, if that is, let's say, one that we have covered that, that uh, consumption, in, okay, because the nature of the, of the, of the energy is in impulses, not in a continuous way, what we do, we send it back to the, to the electricity operator, and we are paid for that. And there are two ways to, to do that. And we are paid for that, just to clarify, not under green, uh, green energy concepts where we get more money for that. You know, no, no, no. We're just we are paid in the same, with the same value as, as the energy that we are paying. So what we, will, we make a net consumption. And with that, that the system is, let's say, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, profitable. So this can be done, as in Spain, where it's a, the law was changed. And now in Spain, all the electricity suppliers are obliged to, to receive the energy from the, from, the, from, the energy, from the operators of the metros. But as well, let's say in most of the country, let's say in most places, uh, let's say the, the tender, there's a public tendering for the supply of the energy and say, why not put an additional clause on the, on the tender process? And okay, if you want, as, as Dorota say, okay, it's just a matter of changing the law, the regulations that, okay, if you want to sell me energy, let's say you have to accept that when I have something back, okay, provided that it has quality and you supervise and so on, so on, so, let's say, I only pay you for the energy net that I am consuming. And just uh, since I'm here, I could not uh, be left here just be before, let's say, without telling some words what, what our company is. Let's say we're just a company, a let pure electrotechnical company, where we're working in different sectors. We are working in the sector of rail, but we are also working in marine sector, making propulsion systems. We are active as well in the industry sector, and we are also very active in the energy sector. That's why we know our regards in the injection and the network, because we are making windmills, we are making solar in injection systems as well. We have experience in traction equipment. That was that was the other the other part of the of the of the of the equipment that we have developed, which was it's like an hybrid. Now people talk about hybrid buses. We talk about 
hybrid hybrid uh, hybrid converter let's say we ha it's it's the knowledge of the of the traction converters with the knowledge of the inverters for the grid and that we uh, let's say we're a spanish company but uh, that we are trying to act locally as well we, we have uh, in europe we have several uh, commercial offices in europe we have, uh, but as well, we have a, a manufacturing plan for Chinese uh, market. We have as well uh, one manufacturing plan in Campinas, and le the last plant we have just opened is in Milwaukee. In, uh, what we have opened a quite very big plant with a very huge investment for the development of power converters for for different uh, applications in in the market. So that was for all for for now. Thank you very much for the attention, and uh, I hope that uh, it has been interesting for you. Thank you.